Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Hello Dave with Down to Earth Astronomy. Another week is over and it's once again time to have a look at what's been going on this week. Elite has been fairly quiet, not, not, not a lot of uh, huge announcements, there's been a lot of smaller stuff I'm sure, but nothing in the grand scheme of things have uh, been going on. But on the channel there's actually been quite a few interesting things going on this week. Now last week I talked about my hotas slowly dying and that I needed an upgrade. And I asked you guys what you would um, uh, recommend for me regarding if you should get another X-52 or I should get a X-56. Because those were really the two that I was uh, was looking at. Um, and even though some people said that the X-56 and the X-55 had some build quality issues. Um, I've heard the exact same story for the X-52 and even the X-52 Pro. And that thing has lasted many many years for me and many many hours of um, of gaming pl and flying with it so i wasn't really too concerned when it comes to build quality um if you've been following me on social media you'll know that i ended up buying the x56 and now that i actually have it um i'm very very happy with it um it feels very very sturdy um and I'll go over, I'll probably do a, a proper review of it later, but I don't want to do a out of the box review because there are tons and tons of those out there that goes into details. I've seen some that are hours long where they talk about every single button and how it feels and stuff like that. But so I don't want to go into too, too, too much detail with how it feels out of the box. There are plenty of that already. What I would much rather do is, is I want to try and use this for at least a month, maybe two, before I do a review of it. So there will be coming a review of it, but only once I've been using it for a while. So I begin to learn the, the ups and downs, the positive and the negative things around it. Because there are some things that you need to get used to. There are some things that was... I've not been using it for under a week, but there was something that was annoying with it right off the start that I you quickly learned to uh, to adapt to. For instance, the the joystick has this small um, analog thumbstick that you can use to uh, to strafe, which is really really nice. But at the beginning, I found it annoying because I had nowhere to put my thumb when um, when I was not using the thumbstick. Now, after I've been using it for a few days, that just feels natural. You just have to learn to put your thumb someplace else rather than on that thumb rest where the joystick is so it's it's one of those things that you would not get if you just did it right off the bat and just get the review right away but it's some of the things that you will learn when you use this um, the product for a while so review will come but of course means that i had to remap everything because the hats are going to be in different positions buttons are going to be moved around and that's something that I have to complete. If it feels like re relearning to play the game completely, because now all, all the buttons have moved, and and I need to to once again learn how to actually fly and uh, the button combinations. Because before, if you have uh, the X fifty two, you will know that it has some switches on the base of the joystick, which I used for like landing gear and cargo scoop and stuff like that. But now those buttons, have, I've moved those over to the small uh, switches on the throttle base. Meaning that now suddenly instead of using my um, my joystick hand to, to deploy my landing gear and I have to use the other hand. That's something that I still do par just by pure reflex when I want to deploy my landing gear. I will reach over for the uh, for the throttle or for the uh, joystick base rather than the throttle base. It's all that stuff and um, yeah, everything just has to be relearned. But I've been playing with it here over the weekend and it is slowly beginning to, uh, to become more and more natural to use it. But it's something... That, uh, that hopefully will be a bit better. So if you, in the coming videos or live streams, see me do some uh, stupid mistakes and misclick buttons, now you will know why. It's just because I, I'm using a new joystick. Anyway, full review of that coming uh, in about a month, month or two or so, something like that. But I've actually been, uh, been out spending uh, even more money. You might have noticed that the lighting in this shot is slightly different than it used to. I used to have a light right over here that would shine up on this side of the face, we can see no shadows. Same thing over here, no shadows. That's because I actually went out and I purchased myself what's called a ring light. I'll see if I can get my phone up here so you guys can, uh... there we go, so you guys can see it. Um... Oh wow, focusing, come on. So up here behind the screen, it's not, it's having a bit hard time focusing. You can maybe s faintly see the camera in there, 
and there's this huge ring-shaped light all around the screen. There we go. Ah, okay. But that just gives a nice, um, a nice even light that um, that just helps illuminate. Well, everything. The background is better illuminated. I don't have have weird shadows when I move my hand over the throttle and stuff like that. So it was fairly cheap and it was a nice purchase. It's hopefully gonna make um, make videos and make green screening a lot easier. So um, so yeah, and and again. The kind of stuff like the ring light, that's the stuff that like improves the quality of the video. So that's the stuff that I use the money for Patreon for. And actually, this is a very good example to, to clearly distinguish between what Patreon money goes to and, and what YouTube ad money goes for in the channel. I've talked about this several times, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But in general, I only use the Patreon money for stuff that upgrades the video quality, like the ring light that gives me better lighting, more control over the lighting in the room. Whereas something like the new uh, whole test that goes directly from the YouTube ad money because it doesn't increase the quality of the videos so that the YouTube ad money, Patreon money are for stuff that increase video quality. Anyway, um, I have one last thing that I want to talk about and it has nothing to do with the channel. It has nothing to do with Elite or any other game that I cover. But for me as a astronomy nerd, it's a pretty pretty big deal if it is what it seems to be. I heard of something called the EV scope this week. The EV scope is a new, I would actually call it a new type of telescope that's currently being developed. Um, there's going to be a Kickstarter campaign coming out soon. And just to be clear, this is not a sponsored video. I have talked to them so that I'm allowed to use the video clips that you can see running here, but it's not a it's not a sponsored video. I'm not getting paid or anything to to do uh, to talk about it. But the reason why I find this a um, uh, such a big deal is because, well, in in the last fifteen years, twenty years, not a lot have really happened in the consumer telescope market. I mean, there's not been any big advantages in in getting a newer telescope over the older one. I mean, the optics might be like slightly, slightly better. Maybe there's some more updated catalogs or better tracking equipment but but that's about it nothing nothing big has happened in the last 20 years when it comes to consumer telescopes so that's why i've been very happy with my current telescope but this thing this thing is quite interesting because what it does is and i'm not completely sure about this again this is still very early but it seems like they've actually implemented a camera or at least a ccd chip into the telescope and they can do some kind of, of uh, light collection. So the main problem, if you've ever been watching in, uh, we've been looking uh, in the, at the sky and the telescope, is if you want to see some of these faint objects like nebulas, you have to do a long exposure with a camera. Now what they're trying to do here is they want to, they want to like that CCD collect images over a, a certain period of time and then display that to you directly. So you can actually get more light kind of live still not quite but that, i mean that's going to be very, very interesting that you're going to be able to to see some of these fainter objects without actually having to do a long exposure with the camera and setting up tracking and all that stuff because all that stuff is already implemented they have a built-in database with tons and tons of objects images of tons and tons of objects so when it's looking at a star or an uh, on, on a cloud it will know due to um Due to some kind of image recognition, I guess it would know what object object it's looking at, and it will then send data information directly to your phone. Where you can get an infograph about the object, like distance and what it is, maybe a brief history or some information about the object on your phone as you're stargazing. That kind of stuff is just amazing. And I mean, again, it's going to be some kind of crowdfunding campaign that's going to come out. So it's still, I mean, it could go either way. I am at least going to uh, to keep an eye on it. And I, something I want to, to, to ask, I mean, we're a lot of people here who like space and like space games, but how many of you do actually have a telescope? How many of you would be would be interested in even getting a telescope? Um, and especially something like the EB scope is because I think that suddenly goes from having to spend a lot of time setting up and aligning telescopes, which is a pain, trust me. It's a pain to do to align telescopes. If that's something that you can suddenly just do automatically by tracking objects just by 
tracking them in the image as they move. That would be absolutely amazing. Um, but anyway, let me know how many of you guys actually have telescopes. How many of you guys have ever considered buying a telescope? I don't know any of you would be interested in getting a telescope. Um, but yeah, that's something a little different, out of the ordinary. But anyway, I've got to call it here. Um, thanks a lot for watching. Oh, I should mention one more thing, though. I forgot. Um, I need to remember to put this in my notes. Live streams. Um, live streams are still on Tuesdays. Um, I've got away from doing weekend live streams because weekends the rest of the year is going to be booked. So I can't really be dedicated to a certain time spot. So I'm still going to stream on Tuesdays. But tomorrow's live stream, which is, of course... Sunday for me, so tomorrow for you, Tuesday. Um, it's gonna be a uh, combat live stream where I look at some combat rank grinding or combat rank increasement methods. Um, there's also gonna be a video out this week about it, um, a more detailed um, video. So look uh, look for that as well. Um, but anyway, tune in tomorrow at 9 o'clock p.m. Central European time, which is currently GMG plus 2 because of daylight saving. Um, so yeah, tune in for that. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to call it. So thanks a lot for watching. Um, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a like. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And until next time, I'll see you guys in space.